The second fundamental operation in the logic interpreter is search. So searching for proofs goes like this. The logic interpreter searches the space of all facts to find unifying facts at an environment that prove the query to be true. So what we're going to do is use the append to form example that I started lecture with, except for I'm making it small because I'm going to use up the whole slide. So append to form takes three sub relations and we append the first two to make the third. So when we ask what's the left thing that I append to CD to get EBCD, it should tell me EB. And here's how it does it. It just starts performing unification between the query and the conclusions of the facts that it knows. So if we start out with this query and then we take the conclusion of the recursive fact and we perform unification on those two, we construct the following binding of variables to values. Or as you can see, we've noticed that A must be E for this to work out, Z must be B, C, D for this to mean anything at all, Y must be C, D, and we have A and R here specified as well. Now notice there's no binding for R yet because we haven't gotten that far in the process. But so far what we've discovered is that the conclusion for the fact, the recursive fact here, is the same as the query relation that I'm looking for, as long as I have these assignments to variables and they both ground to the same expression. So this is a relation that says E followed by something appended to CD gives me EBCD. But there's a little more work to figure out what the rest of this is. And by the way, we still haven't proven that this fact is true because we haven't proven the hypothesis for this fact. So we've unified with the conclusion. Now we go from the conclusion to the hypothesis because the hypothesis is required to prove the conclusion. And we treat this hypothesis as a new query. So notice here that this is not the generic R, Y, Z, but instead a form that's been grounded with this current assignment. So we don't know what R is yet, but we know that Y is C, D, that Z is B, C, D, and we're going to go about trying to prove that this is true. And in order to do that, we'll unify it with the conclusion of the recursive fact again. Now notice that this is a slightly different version, so I added a bunch of twos everywhere, whereas I left them out here. And that's because the second time we apply the same recursive rule, we're really using different variables in order to do it. Okay, so we can form a unification between this hypothesis and this conclusion according to a separate assignment, which notice is a little bit simpler than before, because in particular, now we have B here and Z is CD, as opposed to the old Z, which was BCD, and we had E right at the beginning. So what we've just discovered through unification is that the hypothesis is the same as the conclusion, as long as I have this assignment to the variables, and the grounded form is that if I append B followed by some R2 to CD, then I should get BCD. So this looks like we're getting closer to the answer we want. The last step is to prove the hypothesis of this conclusion, where now, when we ground it out, we have something even simpler than before. It's just appending something to CD gives us CD. And this is something that we can unify successfully with the base case fact, as long as we say that X is CD and R2 is the empty list. So now we've discovered that R2 is the empty list, we've fully unified this, and this fact has no hypothesis, it's just the conclusion. So we've done all of our work. We've actually finished the process of searching for a proof. The last step is to figure out what left really means. So we have this grounded version of the fact, this grounded version of the fact which still has R2 empty, and this one which has R empty. But uh, we now have assignments both to R and to R2. So if we want to figure out what left really is, well, we ground it out and we find that it's some A followed by some R, where A is E, 
Okay? So it's E followed by something. And what's that E? Well, it's R, so we have to figure out what R is. R is A2 followed by R2. So there's A2, which is just B. Where's R2? It's down there. So that means R is just B followed by the empty list, which, by the way, is just another way of saying the list with one element containing B. All right, so now we know what R is, and we know that R is the rest of left. So we just put B in here. And by the way, this is just a complicated way of writing out the list EB, which is exactly what we want to return. Left is EB, and that is what we append to CD in order to get EBCD. So that's the process of searching for proofs, as we just repeatedly unify the query with the conclusion of some fact. And then if that fact has hypotheses, we need to unify those hypotheses with the conclusions of other facts. So starting from the query, we consider all facts that would prove it, starting with their conclusions and then trying to prove their hypotheses. So how do we write this as a function? in Python. Well, the space of facts is searched exhaustively, starting from the query and following what's called a depth first exploration order. And what depth first means is that each proof is explored exhaustively before we try anything else. So here's what the code looks like. We have a function called search, which takes in some clauses, the clauses of the query that we want to be able to satisfy and then some environment that we've built up so far. And then for every fact that we know, we create a new environment that's just for this unification of this fact to these clauses. And we attempt to unify the conclusion of the fact with the first clause in the set of clauses that we're trying to prove using the environment that we just created. So the process of unification will return true or false about whether or not it's possible, but it also will introduce new bindings into this environment that are necessary in order to make the conclusion of the fact look the same as the first clause. Okay, so if this is successful, then for every environment that's particular to this rule, we run another search, which is the search to try to prove the hypothesis of the fact because we can't assume the conclusion is true until we know the hypothesis is true. And we need to extend the environment that we already have in order to do that. So we add even more bindings in there. And if we find any successful searches, then we consider a final search, which is over the rest of the clauses. So remember for a query with multiple clauses or a fact with multiple hypotheses, we have to satisfy all of those at the same time. So this last line just says, if there's more than one thing to satisfy, we have to go through and satisfy the rest of the clauses too, under the same environment. So we're incrementally building up exactly the same environment that we had before. Okay, so then we yield each successful result. What's the result? Well, it's just a binding from variables to values or an environment that we've built up incrementally by trying to satisfy all the clauses that we started with using some facts that we have. Okay, so we yield this, which means we could have multiple different alternatives, and uh, that's the whole story. Now there's a few details I've left out. We limit the depth of the search so that we don't recurse forever. Each time a fact is used, we use it with a different set of variable names so that we don't confuse multiple occurrences of the same recursive rule as being somehow related because those variables are local to a particular rule. And finally, bindings are stored in separate frames to allow backtracking. So there's this one part where we have to make sure that if our search is unsuccessful with a fact, we can go back and try a different fact. And the way we do that is we start off with a new frame so that we don't get confused about which fact is which. So that's the whole story. Let's take a look at the code. Here's logic.py. This module implements a declarative logic language. Search is here. And as you can see, it's slightly different than what I said, because there are some base cases. If we've run out of clauses, then we found a successful assignment. And also there's some work to limit the depth, which is the number of times that we call search. 
For every time we call search from within search, we increment depth so that we don't go past 20 different nested recursive calls, because otherwise it would just take too long. Okay, so here's the entire implementation. It looks a lot like what I told you. For fact and facts, we rename the variables. We create a new environment so that we're able to backtrack if something goes wrong. We unify the fact in the clause. And then for every way in which we can find a satisfying assignment for the rest of the fact, we try to find an extending satisfying assignment for the rest of the clauses. And if all that is successful, then we yield the result. Now with a couple of well-chosen print statements, we can actually see how this works. So right before I unify, I'm going to print out the two things I'm attempting to unify together. One of which is a grounded version of the first clause, where I ground it in the current environment. And the other is the conclusion of the fact that I'm considering. Okay, let's put a marker in between in order to say that we're unifying these two things together. Now, if unification is successful, then I'm going to print out a grounded version of the result. So this is the same clause, except for now I have more in my, in my environment than I did before. And so I should have a more specific version that is what's required in order to unify with the conclusion of the fact. Okay, let's run this. The program that I run it on is append a form defined with the shorthand app, where, where two lists append the form a third with a base fact and a recursive fact. Here's our query. So far, we have nothing in our environment. And so we attempt to unify our query with the base fact, and it doesn't work out. Then we try to unify it with the conclusion of the recursive fact, and we're successful. And so we get a more specific form of what we had before. Before we had just an arbitrary left. Now we have E followed by some R2 that we have yet to fill in and CD, E, B, C, D. All right, so now in order to proceed, we're going to have to unify the hypothesis that goes along with this conclusion after we filled in some assignment to the variables. So the hypothesis that's specific to this particular conclusion above is the one where we say there's some R2 that we append to CD to form B, C, D. And we again try to unify that with the base fact. Here, doesn't work out. So we yet again unify something, this time the hypothesis of the recursive fact with the conclusion of the recursive fact. Now it's weird to be unifying two parts of the same fact, but that happens all the time. I mean, that's the nature of recursion. Notice that we actually have different R's. So even though R appears in this fact, and in the one that we're trying to unify it with, those are different R's because they're local to the fact. Okay, so in order to make this work, it's possible. And a grounded version will tell us that now what we're looking for is a proof that B followed by something can be appended to CD in order to get BCD. How do we do that? Well, it turns out we can unify the hypothesis that goes with this conclusion with our base fact that the empty list appended to anything gives us that same thing back. Okay, the specific version that we actually care about says the empty list and CD form CD, and then we're done. So we've done all of our search, and with all the assignments that we have now, we can get back that left is EB. Now, by the way, the logic interpreter is not done. It doesn't know somehow magically that that's the only way to do it. It has to keep searching for all the other possibilities. And so, in fact, it finds that it can also unify uh, this with... Uh, so this is the same thing we had before, right? Except for now we're unifying it with the conclusion of the recursive fact. 
and so we go kind of even deeper down that recursive route until eventually we find some form that doesn't unify with anything at all. So this says D followed by some unknown R8. Hopefully we'll append to CD in order to get D, but append doesn't work like that. It can't delete this C somehow. And so eventually it discovers that this doesn't unify with any facts at all, and it gives up. 